Welcome everyone to an interview with Route 50 drawbridge tender Angela Johnson. Now, just give me a minute to get the camera up here on the window mount and you'll be able to take a little tour of Ocean City. Well, that's the time, Angie. That's how long it's running. I said, is it on there? It's on there, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's mounted up there in the window. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to cruise down Coastal Highway and see if I can get Angie to tell everybody a little bit about how the drawbridge works. So, so first off, why don't you tell everybody how long you've worked there, Angie, and uh, I guess how you got the job. Hi, everyone. Um, I just celebrated 14 years at the Route 50 Kelly Drawbridge um, on June 28th, and I got the job from my from our friend Brian that used to work there and now he's back so he got me the job there 14 years ago um so I like it I mean the winter time it's kind of boring but thank god we got internet I mean not internet but we got um like the satellite so we can get all kinds of channels you know during the winter time and summertime we got heating in the su in the winter and then we got air conditioning for the summer we got a bathroom downstairs there's like three levels it's kind of like a lighthouse a little bit um i mean if you go all the way down to the third level you can actually go fishing down there because there's like a little square, it's like a big square where there's water right there and you can actually go fishing down there. And your daughter also works there too. Yeah, Crystal, she's been there about, I think, nine years now. So, so how many bridge tenders actually work there in the summertime? Five. And and what's everybody's shift in the summertime? So there's, so there's actually three shifts, there's right? There's three eight-hour shifts, six to two, two to ten, and then ten to six. Okay. But during and the winter time, there's only one person per day, and that's a 12-hour shift. That's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and then we lock it up, and then we go home until the next day. Okay, so so tell everybody a little bit about the the schedule. Like, like what does uh, the boaters, how do they get a hold of you, and like when can the drawbridge be opened, and stuff like that. Between 9 a.m. and 10 p.m., uh, the drawbridge is open 25 and 55 after the hour. After 10 o'clock at night, we're on demand till 9 a.m. the next morning. On Saturdays, um, between 1 and 5 p.m., the bridge is only open once an hour on the hour due to all the bridge traffic coming in and going out. Right, and it can get really backed up on uh, on a Saturday on uh Saturday afternoon, right? Yes. And then also, the White Mall and Open, if you need to come in Ocean City, I advise go with Route 90 instead of Route 50. Because that's, uh, the White Mall and Open is your busiest, busiest bridge openings. Like, uh, I think, how many have you told me that you've, how many uh, boats have gone through just in one uh, eight-hour shift during the White Mall and Open? About 150. Wow. Maybe 200. Yeah. So that's our that's our busiest time during the summer season. Okay. Well, now, how hard was it to learn? And, like, what do you have to uh, be aware of? Because, I mean, you've told me that you've got to have a lot of radio. So you've got to be in communication, not with the boaters. So, so, so what, they can reach you on the phone or a CB? How, how does this work? Well, yeah, our channel is channel 13, 
And um, if they don't have that, they And can... that's on the CB radio, right? Yeah. Channel yeah. 13 on the CB. Yeah, but if they don't have that, they can always call us on our Bridge House phone. Right, but and you have to stay into communication with emergency services like the police or the fire and the ambulance. So tell everybody a little bit about how that works because that could uh, delay a bridge opening for an emergency vehicle. We have a TAN phone. Um, we call it the back phone. Yeah, well, it used to be black. Now it's TAN. And uh, if an accident happens on the bridge, then we pick up the TAN phone and it automatically goes to 65th Street Police Station. And then, um, we, you know, we got to tell them if there's an accident or something happened on the bridge, you know, then the cops will come up or the ambulances or whatever. And then we have to write all this down and we have a, a blue folder that we have to... For like incident report or malfunction report for the bridge, we have to write all that stuff down. And then I have to call my boss and then then our boss has to call, you know, the, the people that actually in, in, inspects the bridge and everything like that. So a lot of people coming into town probably think that Ocean City owns the bridge, but that's not the case. Actually, the state of Maryland owns it, isn't that right? And they subcontract the uh, the bridge tending out to a company. And, uh, and and tell us about the company and also some of the contractors that take care of, like, the uh, infrastructure and the electrical. Covington does all the bridge, all the bridge um, operations. Um, and then Dawson, they do all the electrical work for the bridge. And the, um, and the company that you actually work for? Is Chesapeake Pilot Training and Company. Right, and they, and they operate and manage not just the Route 50 bridge, but many other bridges all over the uh, Delmarva Peninsula. Is that yes. correct? Yes, and Annapolis too. Okay, well, is there anything else you'd like to tell everybody about the Route 50 drawbridge? No, I think that's about it for right now. But thank you all for listening. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the cruise and learned a little bit about how a drawbridge operates.